What we try and do is we, we try and not we try and automate the processes as much as we can to track um, again the issues and the resolution, um, the upcoming decisions and the status of the project. But we try not to make these projects too technology um, over over overbearing. I guess would be the best way to put it. We try and enable enough technology so that we can automate the process, but not losing people in the technology, and still making that that interaction with the client on a weekly basis to tell them what exactly is going on within the project, how we're doing, and what are the challenges we're facing. So th there's a lot of different uh, project methodologies, and uh, we, we actually were just w working with a client last week talking about the specific methodologies. Um, no matter what the methodology is that is um, utilized for the projects, um, the, the really the key is um, really adhering, uh, setting up a a set standard and a set process and a set methodology and then following it. So we at third stage uh, don't, adhere to or don't shy away for, from or adhere to any set methodology, but the key to it is establishing a methodology, establishing what the roles are for each individual from both the client side and from a third stage consulting point of view, and making sure those roles and those um, expectations are established early and are um, discussed throughout the project. So it's really more um, putting the tool in place and then adhering to the tool and following the guidelines that it's set out. Really the biggest challenge that we have on almost every project is um, maintaining a clear expectation um, from a um, activities and a roles and responsibility and a time commitment from both third stage and the client. So really sitting down at the beginning of a project and saying this is what ex is expected from the client's participation point of view and this is what third stage will deliver within the project. Oftentimes there's a lot of enthusiasm and a lot of momentum when we kick off a project. Everyone has their day jobs so we, we tend to see that start to wear off throughout the project. And and really, uh, we we find that that not only from a third stage point of view, but when we come in on some of these expert witness cases as well, one of the the major factors towards a project falling behind or a project failure is that there's a lack of commitment and a lack of decisions made from either third stage or the client. So it's really a matter of setting up these are your expectations and adhering to them every week and immediately addressing when something falls off track or something falls behind schedule. Yeah, I, I think it's it's really a matter of um, setting the, the process in place early on. So s sitting down with the client at the beginning of the project and say, our project team will meet weekly, our executive team will meet biweekly, and our steering committee will meet monthly. Um, that allows us to make sure that for the most part, any project that starts to slip will only have four days at the most to slip behind before we address it. So it's really a matter of, um, not only figuring out what the challenge is, what's causing the project to ball, fall behind, but addressing it as soon as possible with the project team and then really setting up at the beginning of that project those ex escalation points from both a third stage point of view and a client point of view to say, hey, we're, we're falling behind and we're going to address it now before it becomes an issue. So like I said, if you're meeting weekly with the project team, you really your maximum exposure is four days of really having an issue that has hasn't been addressed and once you know it and the client knows it you can work with them to come up with the solution to bring it back on track.